Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our series talking about the various different parts of Plotter and how you use it. I'm Troy Lambert, the Education Lead for Plotter, and this is my partner in crime, CJ Anaya. Hola, Plotter Otters. Hello. <laughs> well, welcome, CJ. Today, we're going to talk about the timelines. We're going to talk about all the various different things that you can do with the Plotter timeline. So we're going to start with kind of a blank project if you start with a if with a blank plotter project this is the first timeline that you're going to see so basically down the left hand side you're going to see various different what we call plot lines right now there's only one we're going to show you how to add more and across the top you're going to initially see chapters so how do we add chapters cj and can we call them something else if we want we, we can. We can name them anything we want, but you can click on that plus sign next to chapter one, and that's how you continue to add chapters throughout your timeline. So if you have 5, 10, 20, 40, if you're writing an epic fantasy and you just, you know, too many chapters to count, you can add as many as you want. Yay. You don't have to call them chapters. You can actually click into them and rename them this way, or you can go to the structure tab and you can name them that way. That way is faster, by the way. If you have to click into each one manually, <laughs> that is not as fast. So this will automatically change all of the ones that you have created to a beat structure. So let's say that you're really just, it's more, you could change it to scene if you wanted to. So you could do chapter, beat, scene, whatever helps you tick when it comes to organizing. So that's a nice fun way to rename all of those chapters and to add them to your timeline. Yes, and you can rename them individually. For instance, if you have titles for your chapters and you want to put those yes. in water, up here you'll notice that the initial is always, it usually looks like this, auto, right? And that's going to automatically name it whatever I have chosen in the structure. But if I want to name up my own thing, I can call it Call of the Wild. And then I can rename that chapter to whatever I want. If I wanted to go back to auto, I just go here and type auto and it'll go back to whatever the name is that I've chosen over in the structure button. So that's really helpful. And so you can name those scenes or beats whatever you want. You can have as many as you want. So I've seen projects that have 12. I've seen plotter projects that have 70. So either way, it, it works either way. It just depends on what you're writing, but you can add as many scenes as you would like. The other thing you can add as many of as you would like is plot lines. Now, there are a couple different ways to add plot lines. You'll notice if we hover over it, the first one is to just regularly add a plot line. So we're going to say this is the subplot. And then we can also add plot templates. Now, we're not going to talk a lot about plot templates in this particular video, but we are going to show you this is a way that you can access. You'll notice that those are my templates that I've created. But the down here, we have starter templates. We have over 30 of these, and we're adding new ones all the time. So you can add something like Freytag's Pyramid or the Hero's Journey, and you can look inside of the plot structure before you add it, and you can see what it's going to be made up of, how many plot lines there are, how many scene cards there are, and what, if anything, it changes the beats to. Okay? So... We have Hero's Journey, we have in Media Res, we have tons of different Larry Brooks short story, we have story engineering, we have tons of different templates that you can choose from. In this case, I'm going to choose one that's really simple, the Freytag's Pyramid, just to show you what that looks like. And that looks something like this. We've added essentially seven scene cards, and inside each of those, it tells you something about how that template is going to work. And again, if you don't want to add that, you can add just a regular empty plot line and call this, we're going to name this after our character and say this is Steve and this is his plot line in his story. And for right now, we're going to remove this plot structure just for the sake of this demo. So if you ever want to remove a plot line, you can come down here and delete it. Now we're going to show you some of the other cool things that happen with those plot lines in just a minute. But we can add scenes as, or beats or chapters, however we want to call those, as many as we want. We can also add plot lines. We can add as many of those as you want, but that's not the real meat of what's happening here on the timeline. So how do we add scene cards, CJ, and what does that look like? 
So if you'll hover under on main plot and hover under scene one, you can click the, the plus button right there and you can create a scene card for yourself. You could title it anything that you want that helps you know what it is and what's happening. You can click inside of it and then you have a whole scene card or note card where you can put in all of your information, any notes as far as what's happening in that scene or in that chapter that you want to cover. There's also a tab called attributes and in attributes, you could also take a look at, at it's very similar to categories. If you go back and watch the, the, the characters and what we did with the, 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 the attributes there, it's very similar to that where you can configure this and add whatever you want when it comes to attributes or things that are happening within it. So you could add goal, you could add motivation, you could add conflict. That way you know what the goal, the motivation, and the conflict are within the scene. You can make those notes there. You can, you can again, click the, the paragraph check mark in order to be more long-winded if necessary. If you don't want to write a paragraph about those things, you can just leave it unchecked and then you just got one line where you can just reference it and keep all of that information there. You could also add a scene card template if you want to. And those are, that's also an option up at the top. Keep in mind that attributes are global. So whatever you add to a scene card for attributes will be added to the rest of the scenes. But when it comes to a template, that is something that will just be added to that particular scene and not the rest of them. And so you could choose a starter scene template and take a look at that. And when you click on it, you can see what is actually happening within that template. You can see if those prompts there are helpful, if you wanna fill in all that information to help guide you throughout the scene. And if you're not so interested in it, then you can click on another one and see what that has. You can cancel out of it or you can apply it. And you can do more than one, which is nice. So you can have a lot of things within that scene card that assist you in navigating the scene and writing it the way that you need to, making all those notes there so that by the time you sit down to write it, you've got everything right at your fingertips to help prompt you as you move forward with your scene. How do you use all of this, Troy? Well, I use I tend to use attributes in my initial planning, but I tend to use templates more in the revision process. And sometimes if you add, let's say you add a template and you decide, you know what, this template is just not something that I need for this particular story, you can delete them as well. And again, no harm in doing that. It doesn't affect anything in your book. Now, when it comes to attributes, if it's something that's global and you delete it, it will delete it everywhere. So that's something to be aware of with attributes. With scene, with scene, you have a lot more options. But this is like the scene essentials is a very interesting. There's a mixture of paragraphs here. And there's also a mixture of one-liners, like what's the hook, what's the time period, the POV. I don't necessarily need a paragraph for that, but some of these other items I might need a paragraph for. And so a lot of times I'll be doing this through the revision process to check my work and see if, if my scenes are on target and in some cases if they actually belong. So I'll put in attributes, I'll put anything that I want to be global to every single scene. I want each goal to have a goal, some kind of motivation, some kind of conflict in it as well. And I might want to know the weather or the color of the sky or maybe the day of the week or something along that line. Although usually I have another timeline plot line for that, but that's another story. But anyway, so attributes and scene and, and scene templates, I use them all the time, a lot of times more in the revision process than in the writing process. But I actually they I think they're very, very useful. Now we're going to talk about some things that we're not necessarily going to cover them in super detail except that you can tag characters in a scene so that you know which character was in this scene. If you watched our character video, we created a new character named Fluffy, but that looks a lot like Tom Cruise, oddly enough. And that's the maybe that's the main character in this scene. We can add places if we've added settings. We can also add tags that tell us something about this particular scene card. Maybe this is a romantic scene card. We can also change the color which I do in the revision process. Usually blue means that I'm writing this particular scene. Yellow means that I'm editing it. And green means it's ready to send to my editor. So there's all kinds of ways that you can do that. You notice that the actual color of the scene card changes on the plot line. Now, the other thing that we want to talk about in relation to, to the timeline is adding act structure. 
And so I'm going to cover that really quickly, and I'm going to show you how to the right way to remove act structure. Okay, the first thing to remember is if we come over here again to the structure button where we renamed scene, we can choose levels. We can also choose how we view things. I'm going to show you that really quickly in just a second because this is going to be a high level overview of act structure. We have some separate videos on YouTube that cover exactly how to use act structure in your timeline in a variety of ways and how to add it to a new project or an existing project things like that. But the essential knowledge you need to know is that you can add levels. So you can add up to three levels. On the default is going to be chapters, and then we're going to add one more, and we have acts up above that. What this basically does is shows you how things nest under each individual part of, of your story. So you can have an act, which includes several chapters, and a chapter, which includes perhaps several different scenes. So in this case, let's look at this in a different viewpoint. There's a, the first way to view things is default. The second is tabbed. The other one is stacked. If we view this as a stacked view, we're going to see that when we added that act structure, it added everything within the same chapter and within the same act, because we didn't tell Plotter how to separate those things out. So we can do that. So we could come over here. And there's these three dots here that talk about restructuring your timeline. And again, we're not going to go in super detail in that, but we could add a chapter here. So we're going to change this from a scene to a chapter. And as soon as we hit restructure, we're going to notice that now we have two separate chapters. And two, each chapter has three individual scenes, but both chapters are nested within Act 1. We can also add additional acts up here by simply clicking on the plus button and inserting an act, which is automatically going to insert a chapter. We can insert more chapters. And then if we hover over this, we can come down here and add more scenes within that chapter. So if we say that each of our chapters generally has three scenes, then we can see that we have now created a two-act structure. And now we've created two different chapters in each one. And within each chapter, there are three different scenes, okay? So there's also another thing to be conscious of, though. If you come up here and delete this act by using this little trash can button, it's also going to delete chapter one and two and everything inside of them. Yes, That's I learned awesome. that the hard way, so. Yes, and this is probably not what you want to do. So if you ever want to change the levels of your act structure, come over here and actually remove a level of act structure. So if I remove one level, notice that the act disappears, but I've still preserved all of my chapters. Now, if I remove one more level, then the chapters disappear, but I haven't lost any of my scenes or any of the scene cards within them. Again, we have videos on YouTube that show exactly how this act structure works and how to use it in different scenarios. But this is a really quick introduction to just let you know that's another thing you can do in this timeline section of Plotter is add an act structure. Now, you can also do things like duplicate plot lines. If you want another plot line that's exactly like the one you've created, you can duplicate it. How do we do that, CJ? So the best way to do that is to actually hover over that plot, and then you'll get a lot of little icons at the bottom, and you'll hover over the duplicate button and click it and it will create a duplicate plot line. Then you're going to hover over the duplicate one and go to the icon that looks like a book on the far right. And that's going to allow you to apply that particular timeline to whichever book you have available that you have created. And there are other books where we talk about how to create several books within a series or within a project. So if you're unclear, Go look at those because we're not going to cover that here. But if you have created books within the project area and you have more than one or two or three and you're like, okay, I really like this timeline and I don't want to have to create it manually myself again. I want to duplicate it and apply it to this book too. That's the way that you would go and do that. Okay. Yep. And that's, that's exactly it. Now you can also move plot lines up or down. So let's say I want Steve here above the subplot because I want the subplot down lower, then I can move that plot line up and down 
just like I can move my attributes or all of those different things that I can move around, right? So I can move plot lines. We, and as we showed you, you can also move plot lines between books. You can use templates here. There's all kinds of things that you can do with plot lines. The other thing that you can do is you can pin a plot line. So if you have several different plot lines, you can pin one and that'll pin that one to the top. Now, this isn't going to matter as much with this particular story because we don't have a whole bunch of plot lines to scroll underneath of it. But if you had a timeline up here and you want to pin that so that all of the other ones kind of like pinning the top of an Excel spreadsheet, uh, you can do that as well. Or you can unpin it. You can also change the color of these. So let's say I wanted Steve. Steve is a dude that likes blue. So I want his to be blue. I can change that color of that plot line to blue or whatever we want it to be. There's some other things we can edit the name of it by coming down here. And that'll pop us into this box where we can edit this as well. There's a couple other things you can do with timelines that are a little more advanced. If you have more than one scene card, for example, and you have them stacked because you can stack scene cards, then you can take these plot lines and collapse them so that it looks like those are stacked on top of each other. If you click on these, you can see them both or you can expand it. And if you expand it, then you'll see both of those stacked on top of each other. So there's some options for the way that you view your timelines as well. Is there anything else we missed about timelines, CJ? No, I think I think we covered it until someone asks us a question and we're like, oh, we should have answered that. <laughs> exactly. But I think we got it covered. <laughs> yes. And so this is the basics of, of timeline, the timeline section and plot lines. There are some other things that you can do with these. Those are covered in more detail in some of our demo videos that we have with Plotter. But for now, this should get you started with the timeline section of Plotter. We're going to move on to our next section in this video series if you're watching them in order. But with that, thanks everyone for joining us for discussion about timelines. Let us know any questions or comments you have in the comments below this video, and we'll be happy to answer those for you. And with that, we'll see you next time.